Greetings and salutations, and welcome back to good old Lustria, and I actually have a question for you all. How is the audio? Is the audio the greatest audio of all time? Or uh, is it at least perhaps the greatest audio you've heard on this channel yet? I have made some upgrades to my audio system, so I hope that translate well into the videos, because I'm gonna start making more videos and uh, more um, voiceovers and more commentary and uh, perhaps participate in some more podcasts etc. So I um, invested in um, in a new setup um, or parts of a setup at least. So um, hopefully it, uh, it sounds that way. Now that being said we have uh, to illuminate some heretics Futile. who are um, currently occupying kayaks who um, this settlement obviously belongs to the Kraken Lord himself, so uh, without further ado, I will just uh, charge in right there and get a good action-oriented episode on its way. Boom, there we go, and uh, now I see that uh, I can't charge quite yet, there is still a thing we need to do. Obviously we need to get Admiral Barsatar into range so he can support with our uh, magics here. So, uh, and you see here the uh, circle, that is what we have to get into position. And I got a question in the last episode on uh, what difficulty level I recommend. I usually play on either very hard and I've played some campaigns on legendary and I prefer this uh, a bit higher difficulty because that forces you to um, think more basically. Um, I like Total War because it is a lot of thinking, it is a lot of strategy and you get punished quite quickly for it if you make strategic mistakes in in Total War. Uh, so uh, obviously it can be nice with more action oriented games such as I don't know, Skyrim or Assassin's Creed. Uh, or more story oriented games such as The Witcher, but um, for the sake of having a strategy game where you enjoy the thinking aspect and you know you get to um, to think in terms of strategy and tactics, I definitely prefer to play it on a bit harder so that you have to think about all the different game mechanics. So for example, the, uh, the income of each settlement, how do you... Um, optimize that and how do you optimize the public order, how do you optimize your characters, so basically the more things you have to think about the more fun the game becomes. So uh, yeah, that is uh, that is good indeed, so yeah I like Total War because of those aspects and um, might say this again and I might have said it before, I don't like Total War so much for the war aspect, it's more the overall management of um, of your nation that is fun. Now I have rambled on enough about that. Let's uh, let's fight. Uh, this should obviously not be all too much of a problem. Uh, they have untrained spearmen, just two units of Lord and Seaguard, and we have a full stack of experienced madcunts. So time to feed the kraken. So we can see yet again on the units here, also we have the missile advantage and they have to come to us otherwise they will just, just get um, shot to bits. So I do believe that this battle will be very um, very easy indeed to uh, to say the least. So uh, And also we can see that we have the experience advantage with um, you know some decent ranks on, uh, on these uh, lads. Alright, we are in the battle, and uh, without further ado, we're just gonna start it, uh, setting these to um, multi-shot round, because uh, that's the best option against uh, infantry. And we're gonna locate our Logan Fellhart right there, he uh, is always gonna go straight for their general, uh, because when you kill their general, they will suffer a... Um, or rather they can't use his leadership, so they will become demoralized. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna keep um, our ranks 
tidy and neat and uh, let them uh, come at us. Now then, there we have uh, their general. So, uh, boom, dreaded duelist. Wow, this looks, this looks absolutely glorious. We're gonna do a cool thing here. Absolutely aesthetic, if anything. Now, obviously, I have plenty of uh, magic things to um, play with. And this is obviously a huge asset for um, for the Dark Elves and uh, having this sort of um, combinations with uh, a land army and a um, and a fleet is uh, definitely something that you can utilize strategically if you uh, if you decide to play. Uh, some total war in the autumn darkness uh, and as my man Elessar commented uh, the um, the other day on our video he said you can game when you have been to the gym lads and that is obviously uh, what is up you need to go to the gym otherwise you um, you can't game that's the uh, absolutely uh, the absolute minimum to get your things, uh, have your things done, and then you game as either stress relief or just because it's fun. But uh, it can never be at the expense of uh, productive endeavors. So we're gonna try to do one of these cool uh, things again from here, and then we're just gonna. Magnificent. Might get a cool thumbnail here as well. There, maybe. Boom, glorious. Uh, anyway. Where uh, do they even have anything? Yeah, they do have some, some unit that needs to be... Um, that needs to be taught a lesson. But I'm gonna speed up this battle because it wasn't overly... It wasn't overly exciting, to be honest, since I uh, kind of knew beforehand that we would um, that we would take them. And there we are. Victory as always. Victory as always, and a good amount of loot. And yet again, as I said last episode, these are our guys, so we're just gonna occupy. Boom! And weapon gained, Calidor's Bane. How absolutely joyous. And look at that. A lot of leveling has been done. Uh, what I will do right now is, as usual, I'm gonna take a few turns and uh, see what the crack is. So be right back. Alright, I am back. And I have a plan. So we're gonna sail out and see uh, what this remnants of battle might uh, contain. If they contain something fun, perhaps uh, some pirates that we can steal from. And this is what I yet again love with this game. The aesthetics and the feel to it. Absolutely epic. After that we will head up here to uh, bolster Jurian and the, um, the lads up here. Because we have a little rebellion on our hands, so uh, we're gonna do that first. The tower Boom. The Tower of Blessed Dread. Aha! A tribute to the sea gods. Your followers have come upon two shipwrecks. Battle at sea pleases not just the gods of war, but the gods of the sea as well. Salvage from such vicious battle is possible, but the sea gods demand their tribute. So only a quarter of the cardio should be taken. And we're gonna go with Fell Cargo. Boom. Okay, so we have a trunk of maps, magic item drop chance plus 25%, and campaign line of sight plus 50%. Uh, 
moreover, we have an armor of silvered steel. So, some good stuff. And I will take a few turns yet again. So that we can get, uh, get to this battle. So be right back. And I am back. So the settlement has been besieged. And uh, she's loyal again, Jorian. Her loyalty is um, wavering a bit. Absolutely blasphemous. She um, she has not taken the glory spill. If you have taken the glory spill, you are always supremely loyal. And we have a research. We have a technology researched. Uh, driven by vengeance, and that's a yeah, the a bit uh, cheaper recruitment costs. Um, so what we can do now is uh, simply to um, Ill -considered. march these lads the there, I suppose, and either wait for them to attack us, or they can attack. Uh, or we can attack them. Um, yeah, this is obviously in range, so uh, I didn't even need to move him right there. Uh, right, so the question remains, and this is what I'm talking about in regards to um, strategy, etc. We could probably just attack them, because uh, yeah, we have our supremely experienced army of mad cunts right there. Uh, so we're gonna take this battle, I'm just going to do the following. Research something fun. So we have uh, these three to choose from, and uh, recruitment rank for Dread Spirits, Dark Shards and Bleak Swords. Or Ascension Troop Battle, so that's leadership for Black Arc Corsairs, that is uh, what I want most of all, because our main uh, uh, our main unit is Corsairs, so this is also good speed, but uh, we're going to go with Ascension True Battle because leadership is always good when we want a good firm battle line that does not break under the pressure. So Jorian, you will have to... Oh, that's a bit of an... Uh, I did not expect it to be that easy to be honest. So yeah, balance of power as usual. Um, Okay, we had quite a, um, a quite good settlement garrison, so that explains why it's so uh, such an easy um, battle. So I will yet again take another turn and see what uh, what fun things we might do. All right, I am back. I have uh, taken a good few turns just to uh, get some more action into the episode and I thought we could actually declare war on uh, these vampires, these, uh, these creatures of the night. Uh, I'm sorry Luther Harkon, this was the only reasonable course of action. What do you mean you will not? You can of course attack him. The Kraken Lord fights. Maybe next turn then. Okay, that was a bit of a fail, it was supposed to be a... Uh, spectacular charge, but I suppose we can do it next Corsairs turn then. Now, let us see Kraken if this is Lord. possible to um, to attack. The ah, there we are. And, uh, hmm. Another uh, quite easy victory. Our We're gonna hovels. occupy uh, <laughs> these, uh, these hovels. And then I suppose we can go down to take Axlotl. I might have butchered that pronunciation, but uh, you never know. And also, we have uh, a good few cool things here that we can uh, research. Or uh, level up, I mean. So, uh, all good. All good. Slaver. Those unfortunate... Those unfortunates captured during a scrap will serve the Dreadfleet one way or another. Casualties captured post-battle plus 12%. That is really good. An upkeep minus 5% for all units. That's an absolutely epic thing. And uh, you will be in dread expansion so that you can build fun things such as uh, Abattoir of Cain. That is uh, definitely good stuff. And we're gonna see how the people fare down here. The Citadel of Dusk, they are 
well, not happy at all. Uh, but I have a good few turns until they will revolt at least. So, uh, what I could do is actually I can march down Jorian to restore some order and uh, see what, uh, how they will react to that. The Elves of Citadel of Dusk. Moreover, we can research something else here. Can't afford this one yet, so we're gonna go with speed. That's also a good thing. So anyway, I'll take one more turn in this episode and see if we can lay siege to this uh, fine place. Right, here we are. Let us see if this is uh, if this is doable to take Axlotl. Look at that, it actually is. It is indeed. Uh, I don't even need to uh, take that, but we lost two uh, good units, uh, unfortunately. We're gonna occupy, to and we're gonna dedicate this place to Mathlan. Uh, we have secured this province, that is uh, very nice indeed, and what will we go with? Growth is definitely my favorite edict. Um, definitely indeed. And that obviously will be our topic for a coming video regarding growth for the sake of growth. Um, <laughs> I saw a really fun, I don't know who commented it, but it was on Twitter. And it said, growth for the sake of growth is the ideology of a cancer cell. Um, I thought that was an apt metaphor, but um, economic growth uh, can be good, of course. It can be bad if it's taking its toll on uh, on Mother Earth. So if you have uh, economic growth that um, consists in cutting down all of these forests to make um, room for uh, grasslands for uh, cattle, for example, then obviously these, these dinosaurs in this example will not have any place to live. Or like I said in a recent video, uh, regarding Oreo and their uh, practices of buying palm oil from uh, from companies that uh, cut down uh, rainforests and then the tigers and elephants and uh, orangutans from this area will uh, be without a home because that is now a plantation for palm oil. Um, but anyway, uh, that is at least my thoughts on what a good edict for uh, for this is. So um, I will call this a episode. I'm just gonna build something fun. Uh, Woodman's hut, timber log resource production, and some income there. And what more fun things can we build? We can build a slave pen. Always a good idea. We can also build dark elf manners, so we get some more growth. And obviously, same thing here, we want to get this settlement to an as high level as possible. Uh, then we can also build something here. If we want that. So, um... Ooh, that is extremely good. A slave hold. Income from post-battle loot, 20% plus for armies within the sphere of influence. That is absolutely great. So that's obviously the sphere of influence is this uh, line that goes here. Yes. So um, yeah, thank you for watching and comment below. Glory to Mathlan and deadlifts for Thor. XXO, boom.